Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna work on this LX570 and update the technology in there. Did you buy one of these expecting new technology and all the new latest, greatest gizmos and gadgets, then instantly regret it and be disappointed because you didn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto? Well, today, we're gonna fix that. Hang up and answer buttons on the steering wheel still work. Now you're going to see this screen and on your display, you'll see this. You'll wanna hit continue with your joystick and there it is. You guys are gonna love this video and the results are good. So watch the whole thing. There's some mistakes I made and there's some things I had to go back and correct. I thought about cutting out all of those pieces and just showing you the absolute correct way to do things that worked, but I decided against that. That's why the video is so long. And I decided to show all of the issues I ran into as well and what I had to go back and change. If you could do me a huge, 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 huge favor, please. You don't have to, but I'm asking if you can, if you find this video helpful, do me two favors, just two. One, hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the video. If you wanna be notified of new video uploads, hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. If you don't wanna be notified, just hit subscribe to support the channel. Subscribe and the thumbs up. Second thing, big ask for you. There's a link to the Amazon listing for the CarPlay unit that is in the description and in the comments that I put down below. If you're gonna buy this unit, do me a huge favor. Click the link within about six hours or so of when you're gonna order it and order it on that page that comes up with the link. That will help the channel get funding from the Amazon Associates account. It's just, I don't know, a couple bucks, I think. It doesn't affect your price that you pay for the item. All it does is add it to my Amazon Associates account so that we get credit on, on that side of things and it helps the channel continue to grow so that I can fund some of these videos with a few bucks here and there. You don't have to if you don't want to, no big deal. But if you could do me that huge favor, it would be a big help. And lastly, make sure to watch till the end of the video. Um, skip through it if you need to, to see different parts of it. But again, there's a lot of things I ran into that were problems and I did my best to show every step of the way, including all those problems. I thought about cutting out all of those pieces and just showing you the absolute correct way to do things that worked, but I decided against that. That's why the video is so long. And I decided to show all of the issues I ran into as well and what I had to go back and change. Um, I think it's helpful. If it were me, I would want to see those steps. If you want to jump through and, and just make sure that you see the correct way to do it, do that as well. But I think it's very helpful to see what sort of problems you run into with these systems. Also, because there might be slight variations from year to year, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure how the firmware has uh, changed from the 2016 model all the way to the 2021 model of the LX570 or any other Lexus vehicles. I know there's a lot of similarities with the RX um, and the way the infotainment system works. So if you do have issues and you come back to this video to try to figure out what those problems are and the fix, they're somewhere in this video, I guarantee you. Okay, okay, I'll shut up. Let's get to it. There's two main differences in the types of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto retrofit kits. You have one category of them that essentially runs Android, and uh, then it has the Android screen that pops up just like you would on a cell phone or an Android tablet, and then it has maybe one app or two apps that allow you to connect with CarPlay or Android Auto. From experience, several other vehicles, those are okay, but they don't really do great when you use them as a CarPlay or an Android Auto interface. They work really well if you just wanna run Android apps and tether off your phone or hotspot, but if you just want it for CarPlay or Android Auto, they're not really that great. They're kind of finicky. They don't connect all the time. They're a little slow at times and the connection is not always that great to your phone. The other type is the type that only runs Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Now these types only exist to allow your phone 
whether it's Android or Apple, to connect to it and then stream your app or your audio over that interface. These generally work much better. They're much more minimal as far as software that resides on them. They don't really depend much on updates to stay up to date and function correctly. And they connect directly to your phone so they don't need any sort of Wi-Fi or hotspot interface. They only exist to run CarPlay or Android Auto, and that's it. And they generally work better, connect much faster, and are much less problematic. That brings us to this video. Here is the one I bought. Bought it on Amazon. I paid around 289 bucks, shipped Amazon Prime, and it's an Amazon Prime uh, item sold by another seller, delivered by Amazon, so I can easily return it if it's complete garbage. The reviews were here and there, some good, some bad. It wasn't great overall reviews, but uh, take it with a grain of salt. This is not something that every single person can install, especially without instructions. And it might take a little bit of creative thinking to make it function and work correctly. So I'm taking a chance on it. I'm gonna install it here. I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how the install goes, what it takes to take the interior apart, get to the plugs you need, and what it takes to install this thing. And if it works, for 289 bucks, you got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in your LX570, where if you wanted to do it any other way, it would cost you at least 700, if not upwards of $1,000. So let's get to it. I'll show you guys how the whole process goes. And if it fails, falls flat on its face, and it's complete garbage, you'll see that too. All right, here's the deal, guys. It's nighttime. I didn't have time to do this during the day for the installation. So I'm going to do my best. All lights are on in the garage. I'm going to do my best to film this with good lighting so that you can see what I'm doing. But there may be some parts that are not ideally lit. I apologize in advance, but I'm going to go ahead and try to get this done before my next trip where I got to leave town here in two days so that the video is done and you guys can see whether this CarPlay thing works or not <laughs> and whether to purchase one and how much uh, of a pain in the butt the installation is. First things first, I need to pour me a bourbon. It has been one heck of a long week. Do you like my cup? Can you guess what's in the cup? <laughs> I always get a kick out of this. Nobody else thinks it's funny, though. But let me get my bourbon and Diet Coke, and I'll get in the car here in a second. Dang. Where am I going to put this cup? I got to take the dash apart. All right. I'll put it here on the floor. Oh. First thing you want to do is take off this piece right here. And it's just held on by clips. So... This side, I'm going to grab it here at the end, pull it back, then gently pry out here, all along the edge. There we go. And finally, right there, oh, there it is. I'm going to put this aside. Next, you want to pull this piece out on this side. It goes from here all the way around to the bottom. Same thing. Pull up on the bottom, out towards you, pops right out. Pull that out, it's all clips. You've got a connector on the back side for the start button. We'll disconnect that, don't pull on the wire. Make sure you push in the tab on the connector and pull it out. Next thing we wanna do is remove this piece. Starts there, goes all the way to here. Now from here to there, it's all clips that holds it in. The AC vent is also attached to this piece and there's a little tube on the back of the AC vent that is also attached to all of this. On this side, this piece here, this trim piece, let me see if I can get a better shot of it. No, I can't really. Um, that trim piece right there, you can see it's one section with all of this that wraps around the entire gauge cluster right there. And this has tabs that go behind that. So what I need to do is gently pry up on this section here. I might need to grab it with two hands from inside here and here, and you wanna pull it out towards you to remove it from, sorry, needed both of my hands. So put, put one hand right here and just grab it 
with some friction on your fingers, put one hand down here and you wanna pull it forward. And that way you make enough clearance to get these little tabs out from underneath there without breaking either these tabs or these tabs. Now that we have that off, we wanna go back over to this end and you wanna grab this whole section here. Don't just grab the metal, grab as much material as you can and pull out towards you. I had to switch hands here, let's see. Okay, so that's out and you can see that the AC vent goes in behind there. There's even more tube back there that goes into there. And we're going to gently pry up. So now that I pulled more of this up, you can see this section is out, right? You can see this section is out. And we don't wanna yank the entire thing out because there is some wires behind here. And uh, I'm gonna use two hands and I'm gonna put one hand somewhere around here, one hand here. And what I wanna do is kind of angle this side further out while pulling this out and then gently wiggle out from here and do my best to avoid breaking any of these clips or mount points. I'm gonna put the camera down for a second and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. I'm holding it up. I got it past that, so it's not behind that trim piece anymore. And let's see what the back side looks like and what's still attached. So we've got those two AC vents. Make sure you're pulling straight out. Don't tilt or bend this or you'll break those off. And you've got that piece behind the AC vent as well. And let's see, over here, we've got one connector there. This is about right in the middle of it, right there. And looks like that's it. So that one connector, I think goes to the um, switches for the AC controls. That one, that one, and that one. And also the clock, I guess. Yeah, that's right. So that one connector is all that is connected to all of those. So you need to remove that one and then you can put this trim piece aside. Now that that piece is removed, we can see everything behind it. The next thing I need to remove is this piece of trim. It starts here, goes to here, and I think you pull straight out on it. So grab right behind it, right here. You don't wanna grab down here, grab right here. Yep, pull straight out. And here, pull straight out as well. There might be some clips in the middle. Let's see what's stuck still. Oh, there's one right here in the middle. There we go. Okay, perfect. So let's turn around and show you where the clips are. There's one in the middle. There's one there. And there's one there. So those are the clips. Two on either side, or one on either side, and then one in the middle. We'll put that aside. Now I need to remove a few 10 millimeter bolts. You got this one, this one here. And then if you look down in there, so here's the radio, there's the screen. Look down from the top, you wanna to remove that 10 millimeter bolt as well, and also that one. Here's an important tip, I just ran into a problem. This little guy, see this little piece of plastic? It's got a little groove in it, it goes right on this tab right here. There's that one, that, that, and then two more here. As I was tinkering with stuff back here, trying to figure out how to take the monitor off, that fell inside there and I had to fish it out with some needle nose pliers. And it was a pain in the butt. So do yourself a favor and take all five of these guys off. One, two, let's see, three, four, and five and put them aside somewhere safe that you'll remember so you can put them back on i hate losing hardware and little plastic bits like that that are designed to have things fit in a much tighter way and reduce vibration so yeah learn from my mistake pull those off put them aside for now just pull off this piece here 
what I did was stick a trim removal tool between this and the back of the screen. It's already up right now, but gently got one side up, then gently got the other side up. I'm trying to take it off as evenly as possible so I don't risk breaking any clips. There we go. Okay, it's off. Looks like I have a connector that goes to, that is the light sensor that tells the car if it's dark enough to turn on your things like the gauge cluster lights and stuff like that that need to be on in the dark. I'm gonna disconnect that and put this aside. Next, we need to take the screen assembly off. Now that this is out of the way and off of these clips on the back, we're not gonna risk breaking any of those clips. And I lied, I didn't disconnect that wire. I'm just gonna leave this laying right there because that wire is in a tight spot, that connector and my old man hands are too fat to get in there. And I'm sweaty and I'm hot. So, excuse me. Now, and you get this pulled forward. I think it's just held on by clips. I'm gonna do this as you're watching. I hope I don't break anything. Uh, let's see. Pull towards me. Okay, oh, looks like towards me and up. So kind of like this way instead of this way. Yeah. Okay, that's coming out. There we go. All right, look at that. Hey, screen's out and loose. In the back, looks like we have one, one connector here, one here, and one here. These definitely need to come out. So I'm gonna put the camera down, peek my head back there, and disconnect those three. Take your time with them. Don't yank them out. Use some, uh, use your phone to take pictures of it if that helps you to see where the connectors are. Look, this one's right here. You see that connector? I see it on the top. Oh, that was easy. Um, this one is also on the top. You see that one? All right. See, I didn't even put the camera down for this one. Look at that. I just turn into a person with very little hands all of a sudden. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the back. You see this clip? This one that points up, this one, this one. Those are the ones, and this one here, that were looped underneath that panel. That's why that has to come off. And then your connectors went here, here, and here. So those are all out. I'm gonna put this very expensive screen gently aside with all my fingerprints all over it. I need to take this glove box out which involves a few different pieces coming out. First, you wanna take this piece of carpeted trim out. This little clip I already took out goes right here. Push the middle of it in, pull it out. Then pull this out. There's one clip somewhere around here. All right. I'll leave that clip with it so it doesn't get lost. Then there are two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here, one right above it. Take those two out. Take this bottom panel out. There is clips right here. Right here, right here, and right here. Push all those forward towards the front of the truck, and this falls down. Take this connector and this one out. Uh, this carpet loops over a hook. There's a hole right there, there's the hook. So remove that connector, that one. Now you wanna remove this piece of trim right here. Just grab it at this edge, lift upwards gently, just keep going until you get to the end here. And then be careful here, there's a tab that goes under there. So you wanna wiggle it out, there's that tab right there. Now you're gonna have one wire that is connected right here for the kick panel lights, disconnect that, and you can put this trim piece aside. Now you've got two more 10 millimeter bolts right here and right here, remove those. Now that those are removed, this entire bottom section you can pull out from the back. You wanna rotate downwards and then this top lip has to be pulled out towards you, not downwards, because this clip, this clip, and those two clips are facing parallel to the floor going that way. So pull it out towards you. Now we will just lean this one down here. I'm gonna put a little box under that so there's no tension on that airbag cord. Box under there. So there's no tension on this. I'm going to remove this 10 millimeter bolt and also that one right there. 
Now that those bottom ones are all disconnected, I'm gonna open the glove box. And in the glove box, I've got two little covers, this one and this one. And underneath those covers, you've got two more 10 millimeter bolts. You wanna remove those, those are out, close the glove box, put one hand on the bottom and support it from the top as well. Pull it out and there's gonna be one more wire. Oh, let me see if I can do this with one hand. There we go. It's gonna be one more wire in the back right there. This guy here, it routes around, comes all the way around right there. That's the glove box light. Push the clip, pull that out, put your glove box aside. Now that I have that out of the way, I'm gonna start working on the wiring. Now you gotta route your LVDS wire and there's two of them that came with this kit. I'm assuming they're for different kinds of screens. This is the one that looks like it fits the wiring. The particular wire I'm looking for is this blue one right here. And I wanna make sure that this connector fits. Well, actually it's this connector. So this will plug in, well, no, that's the wrong one. My bad. This connector will fit on here. There we go. Clip that in, all right. And then the other one, this guy is gonna go back to the uh, to the back of our monitor. I think that's it, maybe, I, I don't know. Let, let's, there's no good instructions with this thing. So this I'm sure goes to the little control box. So I'm going to wiggle it down through here, I think. Yeah, right there maybe. I'm gonna need both hands maybe for this right through there. Let's see, am I talented enough with one hand? <laughs> Is that what she said? So I'm gonna try to grab it right through here and then pull it down through this glove box area. I'm gonna leave it hanging here because I don't know where I wanna mount that box yet. Now I'm gonna get the cables ready that go to the back of the radio and AC unit here. The one you wanna look for is this guy. It's got a lot of other things hanging off of it, but you'll be able to identify it because of these two. These are the big connectors that go to the back of the radio unit. Um, basically, you're going to connect this in line and it's going to interrupt the connection that goes to the back of that. Pull out this entire section that's the AC controls and the radio controls. Once I do pull that out, there might be some, um, I don't know, edges of plastic or metal exposed on the bottom. I don't want to mess up my brand new shift knob or any of this wood that's in perfect condition. So I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna make sure that this lid is closed. Two, I'm gonna make sure that this lid is closed. And number three, I'm gonna take a microfiber cloth or bath towel or whatever you have and place it here. You might need to get two if uh, they're not big enough or three, whatever. Um, or if you have really thin stuff, layer a couple on top of each other. This is a nice thick microfiber cloth. So I'm gonna lay that there before I pull it out. Pull forward on this. Let's see if I can do it uh, without putting the camera down. Oh, I might need to put the camera down. I don't wanna break any of this trim here. Let's see. Oh, oh, there goes that side. Okay, there's the clips there, if you can see them. And here's the clips on this side, if you see them. I'm gonna pull out one side at a time, gently rock back and forth, that way I'm not uh, risking breaking anything. The connector that I need to take off is this gigantic one. That is where this new connector is gonna go, like so. And then that connector is going to plug in to, so that'll connect to the radio. And then that existing connector from the factory will plug into the other end of this. In order to remove that, you got this gray tab right here. You lift up on it. it took me a second to figure it out. So get a little tiny flathead screwdriver. Uh, let me see if I can get a focus here. Okay, there we go. Put it right there. There's a little tab right inside there. Let me see. See that guy right there that pushes in? 
You have to push that in and then lift up. That releases it. Don't try to yank that thing out. There's a method to the madness. So this guy, you'll want to gently lift outwards. And as you lift outwards, it'll get to about that position. And then this connector will come right out. If it's not coming out by itself, it's because it's not totally dislodged. So take your time. So I got that connector in, got that lever gently pushed back down to get this, which comes from the car's factory harness, connected to this. Back here, there's not a whole ton of space. I'm trying to see where I can put all this stuff so that it's not blocking this giant thing from sliding back in where it's supposed to be. Um, I think I'm going to have to connect this and put it parallel to the ground right here so that it ends up underneath this guy, that direction, and then aiming that way so I can route the wires in through here. So I've got those connected, I've got that pushed over to that side, wires as low as I can put them, and I've got the other end routed out to here, and here, and you know, all over the place. So I'm going to temporarily put this guy back in here, and before, oops, <laughs> my bad. Before I try to connect any of these pieces or bolt them back on, I want to test all this to make sure it works. Now we're not done connecting this unit yet. I need to put the monitor back. And when I put the monitor back, this factory connector is going to plug back in. This factory connector is plugged into that first cable, the LVDS cable. This side that's coming back from the LVDS cable is gonna plug into the back of the monitor. Got this back here, just kind of sitting here. I don't have it clipped in. We've got the black connector on, the white connector, and the blue connector. The converter box and the instructions. The reason I've got the instructions is to look at the section with these dip switches to understand which one I need to set up or down so we're not a seven or eight inch screen okay we are a 10.3 or 12.3 i think this is a 12.3 inch screen um i don't see a difference between this and this what does it mean dial setup one dial setup two I guess we could try one and then the other. What's this, seven or eight inch screen? Not that one. 10.3 or 12 point, yeah, but we don't have a touch pad. We have the little joystick. So it's gonna be one of these dip switch settings. I don't know which one, but when change the toggle switch setups, you need to restart the car engine. Okay. All right, we can do that. Um, I guess we'll start with this and see if it works. And if not, we'll go to this. Sure, so dip switches. Flip this thing around. You've got the numbers like that. Down is on, down is on, okay. So all of them need to be up except for two and four. Let me grab my little flathead. And we're going to put number two down. And number four. Okay. Does that match? Yes, it matches. So now I'm going to go plug this guy in. What does it say? The wrong toggle switch setup will cause a black screen, flashing screen, half screen, etc. Uh, please contact us for the correct toggle switch setup code if you meet problems. Okay. So, all right. You get the QR codes for a vehicle we don't have. Um, oh, power cable. I totally missed that. Unplug the original OEM power cable from the head unit and reconnect the new power cable harness 
then plug the new cable into the head unit. One and three is the new main power cable. One and three, okay. Two and four is the original, okay. I plugged that in, I didn't even see this. I'm gonna go back and check. So this is three, which is this guy right there. Uh-huh. I think I saw that. E, e, well, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go look for that in a second. Let's see what else is in here. LVDS, yep, we did that. That side's connected to the back of the monitor. And yeah, so yeah, okay. That's connected. Screen power cable connection. For Lexus cars with remote touch and small touch pad, after finish the installation of the decoder, you don't need to connect the screen power cable. Well, we don't have a touch pad, but we do have what I think it calls remote touch. Yeah, for remote touch, you don't need to connect the screen power cable. If the screen flickers or the original rear camera and original 360 surround camera can't work in CarPlay decoder interface. This guy, I guess? Well, let's see if it works without that. For car with remote touch and small touch pad and the screen power cable, small connectors will be green and gray color wire. Don't need to be connected as shown below. Oh, well, why are you showing it? So I don't think we need that based on this description, but who knows? This uh, Chinese English or whatever it is. Let's go try to plug this thing in and see what happens. All right, I only plugged two things in. One is this wire that goes to the CAN connector. One is the LVDS wire. I have these two here, which look like some sort of interrupt cables and they're labeled CP audio out. I'm assuming they interrupt the audio signal. Uh, I didn't connect those to the back of the radio. I don't know if they're needed. I'm gonna try to get all this working first and see if it functions. And if it doesn't, then we'll come back and do all that good stuff. Video, I'm gonna leave disconnected because the way the wiring harness is set up, it looks like that's set up to add video cameras to your vehicle if you don't already have them. And um, this vehicle, this LX570 already has a 360 cameras. This is some sort of HDMI input. Oh, poop. I need to put that connector back on for the start button. Hang on. Okay, we have a start button. Push it twice. One, two. I have display. Let's see, what is it doing? Anything? Blank screen. Hmm. One more? No? No, I didn't do anything. Let's try this again. Start button. Lexus. Okay. Black screen. One more push button. Turn everything on. At this point, the radio should normally be on. Mm, nothing's happening. Oh, system loading, don't turn off power. What on earth is this? I've never seen this before. I'm gonna wait and see what happens. Doki, you're waiting with me. You're stuck with me, guys. I'm not gonna cut off this video because some weird alien might pop up. Who knows? Okay, we got that stuff. Screen's sort of coming on. Caution. All right, my normal continue button. Oh, there's my mouse, so my mouse works. Okay, screen's on. Radio, does it work? The buttons work? Yeah. So my buttons work. My CAN connector works. Let's see if my audio works. 
just my factory stuff, right? Uh, sure, let's go to 96.7, easy station. Okay, I got audio, my factory stuff's working. Let me see if we can get the interface to pop up for the retrofit kit, and then if we have audio for it, right? Back to the instructions, let's see. All right, it says enter the decoder interface, long press menu button for three seconds from your center console remote, blah, 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 or small touch, okay. So long press the menu button for three seconds should get us to this, to the menu. I totally forgot. And this is, this is what probably goes to that other blue connector, the RF one. Uh, that is your Wi-Fi antenna. Yeah, I'm a dumb dumb. Totally forgot. Goes right there. I'm just gonna leave it hanging for now, along with this other stuff, uh, until we make sure everything's working. Let me get my little towel moved. All right, menu button right there. I'm going to long press the menu button for three seconds. One, two, three. Oh, holy moly. I got a screen. Hallelujah, I got a screen. I've got, I don't know if you can see it, the focus is terrible, CarPlay. AirPlay, wire auto, auto link, setup, YouTube, camera, USB. Um, I'm going to go to CarPlay. Let's see if we can get it set up with my phone. Okay, the mouse works. You know, it's not perfect, but the mouse works. Oh, I see. Left takes me up in this menu, and to the right takes me down the menu. Okay, okay, I see. Um, I'm gonna go to connect mobile to, ah, crap. I selected the wrong thing. So CarPlay, connect mobile device. Okay, real finicky here, buddy. All right start search so i'm gonna go to my bluetooth on my phone so that it's searchable that was really easy the hardest part was that all i could do is go left and right on the joystick to select different things i guess i could yeah up or down left and right um it, it's not really acting as a mouse i'm gonna look and see if there's any other settings on it that'll let this act as some sort of a mouse or a cursor but CarPlay is connected, and it looks great. It's in a widescreen format. It's not all stretched out or anything. I just gotta figure out how to navigate on this thing. This is terrible. Like, you can hear the ding, ding, ding as I move the uh, joystick around, but my cursor's not going anywhere. Let me try one more thing before I go dig through instructions. So, long press of menu. One, two, three. Okay, so that goes back and forth to the Lexus interface. That's good. Long press of menu again. Goes to Apple CarPlay. Super easy. Everything's working really well, except this cursor. All right, I turned off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on my phone so I can get back to here. Let's go to, oh, not exit. Let's go to setup right here. And I'm going to go to, oh, here it is. This navigation is really hard. Okay, touchpad, remote lever. Okay, I'm not a touchpad. I'm a remote lever, I think. Okay. Did, uh, did that work? I don't know if that's doing anything. Turn. Oh, that's a little better. Okay. All right, we're back on CarPlay. Let's see where my cursor is. Oh, okay. Sideways, left, right. Okay, a little better. It's usable. I can't get to that side menu. There. Just for kicks, I'm gonna change the dip switches. Um, that other setting that we were looking at was everything up except for two and three being down. Let me switch them. All right, got them set that way. 
Let's start the vehicle again, or just press it once. Let's see what we get. Okay, that's on. All right, we'll continue. All right, we're gonna long press the menu button. All right, oh, this looks a little different. Okay. Oh, that's different. Oh, now I'm stuck here. Why am I stuck here? Swear to God, this navigation is terrible. This is probably where people get stuck on this stuff. You know, I wish this was just a touch screen so I could do this like on my other cars. So I made one change. There's a setting in the... Uh, the unit settings in that black screen that says to use the menu and the back key to switch left right and now when I hit the back or the menu key it switches between this then I hit it again and it goes here I made a mistake <sighs> at least one mistake I got no audio the ding 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 with the uh, joystick is coming through the factory system but I have no music audio so I think I need to connect this one and I think it connects to this guy who I just unplugged from here. I'm going to plug this into the radio and then plug that into this end. So this interrupts the signal. That's connected. So the uh, aftermarket harness plugs into the radio, interrupts it, and the factory harness plugs into there. Now, in addition to that, there's this aux cable. And from what I've read, if you still don't get audio there, this cable can go to your auxiliary port. I'm gonna leave it disconnected for now to see if we can get audio just by doing that. Now, if you were following along earlier, I fished all of that down through here. It was a giant pain in the butt to get it back. So if you've watched this far, don't fish that down through here. <laughs> just connect it to the radio. See, you get to see all of my mistakes. <laughs> Hopefully you've watched this far before you fish the uh, wire down there. And started this install so i'm gonna get this situated back in there god dang some of these parts get really hot okay now let's try this again and see if I, at least i have audio you can't hear it right now while i'm taking video but that fixed my audio problem so now i can hear my music map directions and everything that's playing there so the only thing that is really finicky still is the navigation with the joystick Let's take some more stuff apart. This side panel, this one right here, I pulled it off. Uh, you got to pull up and out. Here are the clips. You see they're all pointing downwards, downwards, downwards. So you want to pull up on it and then outwards to get it out. We're going to do the same on this side. We're going to pull this panel up and once it's up, go you want to put it away this little panel I already have it off right here you want to just grab the edge pull it up here here and in the middle those are the clips on the bottom now I think this whole thing should yeah there we go should come up I don't know if this is the right way or not pray for me <laughs> what I'm trying to do is get to the connector on the bottom of this and why I'm trying to do that is sorry drop some stuff to connect this interrupt cable as well to the bottom of the joystick um, i think this is the one that interrupts the signal to the joystick when you switch over um, to the android auto and carplay unit so i'm gonna lift this up like this let's see what's under it all right so it is gonna be this is that's our car seat heat and cool where is it okay that's that's the connector right there i think it goes up to the joystick right there you see it 
Yeah, that looks right, I think. Yeah, that should be right. Now that I've got that splitter connected to the joystick control, all I have left coming out of it is this guy. And I disconnected the, uh, so this little loop cable is on there. And I disconnected the loop cable, pulled that out. What I have left is this. Pull the radio forward and you want to locate this guy. Looks like this. The label on it says, what does it say? Old car, no split display, can control. So you want to pull this little connector out from here. That's what it looks like when it's disconnected. Now, before I go routing this other cable all through the, uh, all this stuff, I'm going to plug it into this one. So this big side, I'm going to leave unplugged. I don't think that needs to be plugged in. I'm just guessing here, so follow along. And I'm going to take this one and plug it in here. God, the things I do to save six, seven hundred bucks. All right, plugged in. Whoops, I don't have an emergency. There we go. All right. We'll start the car, hit the start button twice, and let's see what we get. Okay, let's see how the mouse works. Oh, it's much more responsive. Did I speak too soon? Holy moly, I figured it out. All right, looks like I'd missed one part. So behind this guy, remember I took the uh, touchpad cable, the interrupt cable, plugged it into this. The other end that I disconnected, that one, I had to connect this little loopback cable to it. And let me show you what happens now. Now when I use the joystick, it actually works. There we go, it's over here. Go down to the play button. You can see the cursors right there. <laughs> you know what I noticed? Whenever I'm filming, for some reason, the joystick does not respond and it keeps getting jittery. As soon as I stop filming, it works now. That's why it was working earlier when I plugged in the loopback cable and then came back and tried it. So it does work. I just can't show you while I'm filming because you can see it makes the ding ding sounds but it doesn't do anything but as soon as i stop filming it works i swear it works <laughs> and then the uh, menu and back button also switch between this and the app drawer so it's functioning now my sound is working and then the only other thing that i did is switch the dipsticks or the dip switches not dipsticks this is not oil i'm checking the dip switches I switched one, two, and three down to the on position and the rest of them off. And plugged in that loopback cable to the CAN control for the joystick and everything's functioning. I love it. The only other thing I need to do on my phone in my settings, you wanna make sure you're still connected to your car's Bluetooth for your phone and go into your settings and everything, depending on if you have Apple or iPhone. The settings are slightly different. You wanna make sure your phone calls are going to the car's Bluetooth. And then the audio is going to the uh, CarPlay on this device. I'm gonna get all this put back together. I'm going to unplug this joystick wire, get it routed under there, plug it back in, organize those wires a bit so they're not a jumbled mess, push all this back, get everything bolted back in, and then cross my fingers and hope to God that it all still works and nothing came loose. But you've learned from my mistakes. I hope you watched the whole video and saw all the things I screwed up so that you know what things to look out for. The exact unit I bought, the link is down in the description, is 289 bucks at least currently on Amazon, shipped to your door, and it's Amazon Prime, so if it sucks and you hate it, you can easily print out an Amazon return label, return it, no harm to you. No harm, no foul, you get a refund. But so far, I've gotten it to work. It looks pretty good, it sounds pretty good. The main problem was there's just no darn support for this thing and no good instructions. And it's kind of a pain to figure out what wires go where because it's sort of a universal-ish setup for a variety of Lexus vehicles, but I got it to work, 
and I like it. Um, hang tight. Video's not over. I'm going to put it all back together. I'm going to use it without the phone recording, and I'm going to come back and give you my thoughts. Everything's back together. Sorry, it's dark in here. All my trim panels, all that good stuff. The actual box, I ended up sticking it under there, behind the carpet in that very corner over there. Um, wires reach just enough, and I don't know if the audio is gonna cut out or anything, but let me show you. If I put it in reverse, reverse camera works just fine. Pops right up, even when I'm in CarPlay, goes right back to it. And whenever I uh, come to a stop or slow down, the um, 360 camera turns on as well. So all of that's working correctly. I don't have any disconnects when that happens. And all of my normal car functions are working correctly. One thing I noticed is that you can hold the menu or the map button, either one, for three seconds, and it switches back and forth. There's uh, one, two, three switches then control all my Lexus stuff and then one two three and it switches back to the CarPlay and as I told you just a little while ago the um, joystick works perfectly good as long as I'm not filming but when I'm filming it's a little finicky I don't know why uh, I'm not sure what the correlation is between the two but all that is a little odd the other thing I did is I went into the settings for the CarPlay unit. I disconnected my phone from it. I went into the settings and I selected audio over Bluetooth. And um, then basically what I do, media on my factory head unit, I select Bluetooth and I leave it on Bluetooth and all the audio from this ends up on the Bluetooth. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it works and it functions correctly. I can hear the music, the map, all that stuff. One other thing that I did is select the um, um, Lexus Bluetooth connection for my phone call audio. Um, I can't show you on the video, but just look it up on Google. Uh, look up how to select Bluetooth source for phone calls uh, on an iPhone. And if you have Android, I don't know what the exact settings are, but there's something in there where you can select it. And that way your phone calls still go back to the factory Lexus audio system, not to the CarPlay. Otherwise, if they go to the CarPlay, there's no microphone in that thing, so nobody's going to hear you on the other end. You'll just hear them. Um, in the iPhone, it is under the accessibility option section. Then you go to touch, and it's somewhere in there, if I remember correctly. Anyway, if... Um, you guys are looking for a CarPlay unit. This one works perfect. I haven't found any problems with it. I've only driven around for about 30 minutes and tinkered with it, make sure all my factory options, cameras, 360 camera, the camera's popping on and off, all of that works, nothing's cutting out. Audio's working correctly. I got all the Bluetooth stuff figured out, phone call things figured out. It's all working perfectly fine. The only thing I can gripe about is the joystick controls, and I think that's an issue no matter which one of these you have, even on the more expensive ones from everything I've read. The controls aren't that great because it's really meant to be used with a touchscreen. Oh well, at least it works, and I got CarPlay. Um, my opinion, well worth the 289 bucks. I would have paid 400 bucks for it, or maybe more. Uh, I'm glad I did not pay $700 to $1,200 for any of the other ones because this one works just as well. I just had to figure out how to get it all wired up and working correctly. And for you guys that are looking to do this, now you've got a tutorial of how to install this one correctly to get everything functioning. I hope that you guys are able to get this CarPlay thing installed in your LX570. Again, this is for the 2016 through 2000, to, uh, excuse me, through 2021. It's, oh God, what time is it? It's 2 a.m. I gotta go get showered and get to bed. I got work in the morning. Working pretty well. Uh, the hang up and answer buttons on the steering wheel still work for phone calls and as I mentioned before, for the phone call audio, I set my phone to use the Lexus LX Bluetooth so that it's better quality and it's using all the uh, factory stuff as far as, I don't know, noise canceling and whatever it does because the sound quality is actually pretty good on phone calls. Overall, I'm really happy. Um, 
I highly recommend going this route. If you think you need additional technical support and you need somebody to answer questions and walk you through and you want to be able to call someone, buy one from BeatSonic or Navix or Grom V-Lite 2. They're going to be uh, similar in nature to this setup, except you're going to be paying hundreds of dollars more. Um, again, somewhere in the range of 700 to about a thousand or 1200 shipped more than likely with tax and everything this was 289 dollars shipped amazon prime got here the next day and if it absolutely sucks it's an easy return policy so i risked it so that you guys could find out <laughs> if it was any good or not and it turns out it's actually pretty decent and it works and it's everything that i could ask for i hope you found this video helpful guys I really do. I was very hesitant about this one and hesitant to spend all the time and effort to do all of this. I'm sorry that a lot of the installation video was at night in the dark, but with my work schedule, it is very difficult to find time when the sun is out and with the kids and everything while they're still awake. I love spending time with them. So I apologize for the dark videos during the install process, but I try to get as much light on the different steps as I could. If you have any questions at all, put them in the comments below. I am always willing to help out. I'm always excited to hear from you guys what sort of wins you had, what sort of obstacles you ran into, and anything else you've learned that I can learn from you guys. I think for Android Auto, you go to Auto Link. So let me give that a try. All right, it says, please connect your Android device. So you go to your Bluetooth devices, you find CarPlay. Let's connect. And pair. Now you're going to see this screen and on your display, you'll see this. You wanna hit continue with your joystick. And there it is, Android Auto, easy. And let's see what the navigation looks like with the uh, joystick. Yeah, it's just as bad as CarPlay. So the navigation isn't great. You don't have like a mouse you can move around, which is unfortunate. You don't have a touch screen, but it uh, works and you've got all your functions on here and you can do the full screen for the map or the uh, music or any of the ones uh, that go widescreen, Pandora, YouTube music, all those. So there you go. Works with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, both super simple to set up and everything actually works. I personally highly recommend this. It is well worth the effort to install and it's uh, half, one third, or sometimes even a quarter of the price of the other solutions. Make sure to comment and again, subscribe. And if you wanna be notified of new content uploaded, as I get the, the new videos uploaded, hit that notification bell icon next to the subscribe button. If you just want to subscribe and don't want notifications, don't hit the bell icon. In the meantime, I absolutely love you guys. I hope you have a great rest of the week. God bless you, and I will see you next time.